Hey everyone, Leo Bond here. I'm back again today for the Best Buy Canada plug-in blog, and this time it's with a brief look at the Protocol Galileo Stealth Drone, which is a fairly large quadcopter that's pretty much this year's version of the Protocol Galileo Drone that I tested and reviewed approximately one year ago. So what we're going to do here is quickly run through several of the Stealth's key features and specs, and all the while we'll be showing some flight footage that I got during testing, including the Stealth performing a few very cool stunts, basically flips and whatnot. And by the end of the video, I'll let you know all about how it performed and what exactly I thought of it, which I have to say is something of a mixed bag this time around. I really don't think that the Stealth is likely to suit quite everyone, but as with most things, there will probably be those out there that will just absolutely love it, particularly pilots with the experience and skill to take on a drone that's as large and powerful as this one is. So let's get right to it. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to say about the Galileo Stealth Drone is that it runs on a 2000 mAh lithium polymer battery, and you should get up to 7 minutes of flight time on a full battery charge which takes roughly two and a half to three hours to achieve. Now, I believe I read somewhere amongst the specs that it's supposed to take about 200 minutes to fully charge, but for me it seemed to fall more in that two and a half hour range for the few times that I charged it up. And I also found that seven minutes of flight time was pretty much bang on, and that's not really surprising to me because this drone just seems to be kind of heavy in the air, and you can sort of notice it in the flight footage when I do a flip or whatever, how far down it kind of dips afterwards. Now, I've tested other large drones that didn't lose nearly as much altitude after a flip, so I would have to say that the Stealth flies just a little bit on the heavy side. Now, the Stealth works with a 2.4 GHz transmitter that runs on six AA batteries, and you're going to have to supply those yourself. And the buttons on this controller are, for the most part, labeled according to their function. At least the main ones are. So there are specific buttons for things like takeoff and landing and flip mode and photo and video. So it makes the controller a whole lot more intuitive, I guess you could say, more straightforward to use than some others that I've encountered in the past. And you might think, well, aren't they always well labeled, these kind of things? And I can tell you the answer to that question is a big old no, because last year's version of the Galileo did not have a number of these buttons labeled at all. And I don't know how many times I was asked questions like, how do you take a picture or shoot video with this thing? Because it just was not obvious to people how to do it. You actually had to go into the instruction booklet and read and figure it out in order to be able to do those things. Now, there's also a mount on the controller for attaching your smartphone, and that allows you to use the freely downloadable app to stream live video from the drone's camera as you fly it around. So that's pretty neat. So overall, some definite improvements with the controller this time around. Now, as for that camera that I just mentioned, it's a high-definition model with 1280 by 720 resolution, and there's also a small slot for an included micro SD chip which holds about 4 gigabytes of video or still images. And although the camera is an HD model, it's not the most solid feeling camera that I've ever uh, come across in my life. And it actually popped off for me pretty much every time I landed the drone, so I kept having to put it back on. And uh, it's kind of tough to tell what's right side up because there's no real obvious indicators of that. And so one of the times I actually put it on upside down and got a whole bunch of upside down <laughs> footage. Um, now I am showing some footage right now. This is some of the better footage that I got with this camera. And as you can see, it's not exactly professional quality by any means. But if you just want to shoot, you know, for fun or as part of a hobby, you like taking some pictures or whatever, it is good for that. If you need to shoot professional level images, I think you're going to have to go just a little bit higher end than the Galileo Stealth Drone. Now, there is some assembly required with this thing. You'll actually have to attach both the legs and the propeller guards. And there's these very tiny Phillips head screws that you have to screw in. Now, happily, this thing does come with its own screwdriver, and the whole job only really takes a few minutes. But what I found was that the screw heads wanted it to strip before they wanted it to seat all the way in properly. And this led to the prop guards being somewhat loose, and they sort of would bounce around during flight, and the propellers were actually hitting them at times. In fact, one of the prop guards was cut all the way through by the propeller hitting it so much 
So I didn't bother to leave the guards on for very long. I kind of figured it's just extra weight anyways, and I wasn't really too concerned about protecting the propellers because they're actually quite robust on this drone. So even when I did have the odd upset or two, the props didn't really sustain much more damage than just a few scratches. And that's really one of the best things that I can say about the Galileo Stealth Drone. Aside from the camera being a little bit flimsy, most of this thing seems pretty solid and relatively durable. Now, other features of the Galileo Stealth include a top flight speed of 21 kilometers an hour, so about 13 miles per hour, and that is certainly respectable, and it also has motion-sensitive six-axis stabilization, which seems to do a pretty good job because I did find that this thing was relatively stable during flight, at least for the most part. One incident that I did have, however, occurred as I was making a high-speed pass overhead, and when the drone got about 100 feet away from my position, it suddenly just stopped responding to my input commands. I couldn't get it to turn around or reverse course, so basically it just took off on me. And I'm not sure whether the signal from the transmitter briefly lost contact or what, but it was a pretty scary situation because I just completely lost control of this thing and I had no idea what was going to happen next. Now, luckily, I was in a rather large park that had a pretty good wall of trees bordering a couple of its different sides, and the drone was heading straight for one of those tree walls. Now, since I wasn't flying high enough to clear the trees, naturally I ended up in a tree, and I had to spend the better part of the next hour trying to recover the drone. That was a bit of an ordeal. It involved getting a ladder and some rope, just a whole big production. Uh, I'm definitely not going to show any pictures of that, but anyway... You can understand that sometimes this can be a little bit on the nerve-wracking side when one of these things takes off on you. You just never know where it could possibly end up. Had it been a huge clump of woods and it ended up going above the trees, you know, you'd probably just never find it up in the tree canopy somewhere. So I would suggest having at least some piloting experience before you tackle this particular drone. Its recommended age range is 14 and up, so it's not for the really younger kids, and I can certainly understand why. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say for right now about the old Galileo Stealth quadcopter. Now, it is a fairly nice drone, and I did mostly enjoy flying it. It's not without its issues and drawbacks. I do really think that you need to consider everything before deciding whether or not to buy one. However, if you've got the piloting skills, the experience, and the confidence to handle this thing, I definitely do think you can have some pretty serious fun with it. Now, if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please give it a like or a share, and be sure to keep an eye out over the next few weeks as I've still got heaps more cool toys to review between now and Christmas. In fact, I've just about finished shooting a video on Luke Skywalker's green Return of the Jedi Force FX lightsaber that'll be going up very, very soon, so do stay tuned for that. But until then, this is Leo Bond signing off and saying thanks everyone for watching, and have an excellent day.